Some heroes are made, not born. A combination of Superman and Lex Luthor's DNA, Superboy was an outsider from his inception. Raised in a lab and aged to maturity in the public spotlight, Superboy went from a young teenager with an attitude to a more mature veteran of the superhero team, Young Justice. Hey yo, welcome back to my channel. Today, a lot of my McFarlane DC Multiverse was delivered. So expect that in the weekend, I will be uploading a lot of uh, McFarlane DC Multiverse review videos. As a matter of fact, before this video, I already uploaded a review of the McFarlane DC Multiverse Cyborg Superman. So guys, if you are interested with that figure, please come check it out. In this video, I will be reviewing the latest uh, addition to the Teen Titans line, which is Connor Kent. As you can see, Connor Kent is released on the higher price range figures, which is the McFarlane Collector Edition. So let's take a deep dive in this figure and let's start with the cool packaging. At the front of the box, it states McFarlane Collector Edition, DC Multiverse Connor Kent, with this huge window wherein we are able to see the figure and all the accessories that comes with it. Fortunately, I guess they did give a lot of accessories to this figure this time. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, that's a diorama effect. And then he has two alternate head sculpt. At the side, DC Multiverse, McFarlane Collector Edition, Connor Kent, Teen Titans. And then the numbering is here, so I guess this figure is number 15 in the Collector Edition line. On the other side, a continuation of the window of the, of the front of the box, and then DC Multiverse, Connor Kent, number 15. And finally, at the back, we see this amazing art from the comics of Connor Kent. He scales at 7 inches or 18 centimeters. So we came with the standard McFarlane plate stand. And then, surprisingly, this is the first time that the figure has a plate stand. And at the same time, he also has this normal stand. Standard McFarlane art card. With the biography at the back. And then... This is actually something new. Instead of the usual art card stand that we usually get from the McFarlane Collector Edition, we don't have that here. Instead, they, they gave us this, which is more like an effect fart, like a diorama, which, to be honest, if they really want to spice up their Collector Edition, they should continue with this. Instead of that art card stand, which we all don't ask for, let, let them give us, you know, certain diorama effects, which at least if we can accumulate and collect through time, will help us in our display. So I hope that this will be a start for the McFarlane Collector Edition in giving us diorama display parts. This actually has a hole here, which I don't know for what, because I don't really see any other accessories they provided that will fit there. So I just thought, okay, so maybe we, they, they gave this for that, which I don't know, that, that makes no sense. Maybe that's why, but yeah, it doesn't even fit that well. 
doesn't even fit that well. Now, aside from those close pests that we get from him out of the box, he also has this, I don't know why he need this pointing hand, and this, well, I guess, weapon holding hand. I have a theory that this mold, this body mold, is a reuse of the uh, Tad McFarlane figure that is together with that spawn. But I don't have that, so I don't want to assume. But for those people who have the two pack, which is uh, the, I think that's the, like the, it contains the original heart of Spawn and Tad McFarlane. I think, I think it's, this is the mold of that Tad McFarlane one. And that's why they also gave this alternate pointing hand. And I think this is supposed to be like a comic holding hand or, or something. Anyway, this is what I don't like about McFarlane. When they do, when they reuse a mold, they don't even change any of the accessories, like for example, this uh, alternate hand, to at least, to at least be, you know, to at least be compatible with the character where, which they are creating. I don't know why Connor Kent would need a pointing hand. Well, this maybe this makes sense because this is like a generic holding hand. Now, aside from this uh, neutral looking head sculpt, which to be honest, it's, it is pretty good. Perlin have been upping their game when it comes to the head sculpt. I, uh, I actually li like the, this head sculpt. Now, in addition to this, they also provided this more angry looking head sculpt, which, all, which is also good. So both of these head sculpt looks amazing. I like them. But Perlin is it's really upping their game when it comes to their head sculpt. I've seen improvement lately. And this is one of their more good looking head sculpt. But aside from that, we also received this head sculpt. I think this is the one when, uh, when he escaped from the lab, wearing his belt, and he just used. I guess this is something where he just used his hit vision. Now, based from the based from the what I remember about uh, Connor Kent, he is a clone of the DNA of. Superman and Lex Luthor, and I guess that's why he also has this, this head sculpt, you know, because this resembles more of the Superman DNA, and this makes him look more of the, you know, Lex Luthor DNA. But again, this head sculpt looks good. This is an amazing head sculpt. Just testing that diorama stand that they provided to us, and yeah, it does connect pretty well, and it does stand pretty well. So, it's a good start for McFarlane Collector Edition. Hope they really start giving us diorama part instead of that art card stand, which again, we all did not ask for. Okay, let's try replacing the head sculpt if it works well. Okay, that took off pretty nicely. And then... Yeah. Yeah, it did connect pretty well. I think I'm keeping this head sculpt on him. This is the one that I like most. Now let's have a look at the figure. Now, again, as I said, I don't have that two-pack, uh, that Spawn and Todd McFarlane two-pack, but I think this is a reuse of that mold, which I don't have a problem with, but I wish if they use this mold, they actually change this top portion because I think he's a little too thin on this portion. He's a little too slim. 
I think he needs to be muscular here, like, you know, like in the art. I think he needs to be mus more muscular. But, yeah, but I, but I think it would work. But, yeah, as I, again, I said, it would have been better if they changed this portion to be more, you know, to be more like the Connor Kent character. The S logo or S symbol is just painted and not a separate part, which I guess makes sense because this character is basically just, you know, wearing jeans and a t-shirt with an S logo on it. So that makes sense. I do like the mold that they made to the jeans so it's not boring instead of just making it like, you know, like a straight leg. They use this different folds on the jeans. So yeah, I find that really interesting. I like that. I like what they did there. And then on the torso, same thing. They did added some molded they did added some molded design here. Although when it comes here it became it comes it came a little clean. Same thing as in the back. Oh, although there's that design. Anyway, after complaining about the fact that they didn't change this while I'm having a look at it, I think, yeah, I think it would work. I think it could work. I think what's really making me like this figure is because of the great head sculpt. That's why my focus is more on the head sculpt. And I'm kind of ignoring the fact that it's a little too slim in this, in the in the in the torso area. Now let's go with articulation. Now he comes in a double ball peg, but I noticed that the way that this head is designed. It's a little too tight. Look, this is in the way, so he cannot look up. This figure cannot look up, which is unfortunate for a character that can fly. He can look down, though. He can tilt his head and look side to side. So, yeah, a little limitation on the range because he cannot look up. I think... That will be the same case with the other head because they have the same mold. Let's try this one. Okay, so guys, there's the peg. Yeah, same thing. You cannot look up. So same articulation. I think it's supposed to have a butterfly articulation here, but yeah, range is a little too limited. So we can only do that. And forward, you can only do up to that. Now continuing with the hands, he has a cut here. So there's rotation here. And then double jointed elbow, and then double peg wrist. Yeah, double peg wrist. He has a abdominal cut, so you can do that. But as far as looking back. You can do that much. Looking forward, limited. Side to side, limited. Though he also has a waist rotation, so those two 
joint combine, you can do that, which is exceptionally for the good. Then you can look forward, well, only that much. Then side to side. For the leg, again, thigh articulation. Double jointed knee. Man, that looks terrible. Yeah, that cut is terrible. Ankle pivot, toe articulation. You can kick that far. You can kick back that far. Then you can do the Van Dam. I think right now the trend is McFarlane is just putting the characters that we've been waiting for for them to create and release into the McFarlane Collector Edition line because this Connor Kent and the other one, Starfire, are very much needed character in order to complete our Teen Titans team. Anyway, in the case of this release, I think the paintwork is there. It is very sharp. Head sculpt is amazing. The sculpt and both the paintwork on the head sculpt is amazing. And then add to that the diorama and then the alternate two heads. I think in a way, at least in this, in the case of this figure, McFarlane, McFarlane made an effort in order for us to have more value for our book. And if you are like me, who wants to assemble the uh, Teen Titans team already, this is a must-have figure. Anyway, guys, if you've reached this part of my video, thank you. Again, if you like my video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And again, guys, enjoy life and keep collecting.